Alright, yeah, we're good. Alright. Everyone ready? Yes? Alright, good. The purpose of debate education should be to train to challenge oppressive structures, not perpetuate them. That's Boomer in 91. It focused on micro levels only because after you've, after you've addressed institutional oppression without understanding institutional access, students can sexualize social interaction, they play prejudice, but the question argued privileges are also oppressive. Exposure helps students gain greater understanding for those who never raise questions and apply their knowledge to everyday interactions. Second, discussions cannot be based upon ideal theory. We must engage in policy discussions because discussions mean nothing unless they change the value of people they affect. That's Curry and Fortney. Many discussions should adjudicate the first period, talks on a few or the other. They have to go more high frames, often cover anti ethical paradigms, skeptics, any discussion about the concrete nature of repression. Impacts. First, this justifies comparative worlds. Curry says that we should focus on real with accuracy. Comparative worlds also independently better. A point is possible means that both sides better world and don't get access to things like skep, nibs, etc. B point is that the most real world people don't just debate the truth of proposition. We have to do something about the truth by advocating something. Second, is that non-idealized framework to account that account for oppression are much more accurate. The dominant standpoint because meaningful expression on morality is constructed because ignores oppression. Examining ethical problems from the standpoint of the oppressed is key. That's Jagger in 83. The standpoint of the oppressed provides a view a bit more important than the ruling class. The condition of the oppressed is visible only dimly to the ruling class. The oppressed are able to see the rule as well as the rule as the standpoint. <coughs> the oppressed is the standpoint of the ruling Cross, but the standard is minimizing oppression. Impact calculus. First, intent is a code word for privilege and ignorance. Consequences should outweigh this. Uh, 13. It was never my intent. I'm not erasing the impact for action to be found far more important than the question of our time. Making the conversation about intent ensures the user identity state and center any conversation with the impact around you becomes marginalized. Second, is that critical theory demands that particularity for the best standard? This means that they should explicitly explain how the root cause cause the app impacts or why the world value uniquely unacceptable, etc. Instead of just saying root X is the root cause of everything. That's price in 98. These small teams can vary possible interests events while admitting that some things are always contingent to such and contradict critical theory, they do not research is that a specimen contingent means that claims are made in relation to particular evidence based on particular phenomena. Rejection of big T truth claims not for a close false small T. Third is that nationalism is the only epistemically accessible information we can have. This means that materialism and consequences come first. That's happened on 11. If moral facts lies on the range, then moral facts cannot make any difference. Moral facts cannot influence the physical world, then it's hard to see how you can have any knowledge of them. Fourth is that the topic concerns the conflict between two different types of violation. The question is which one is worse. Their framework must be able to weigh impacts and oppression should be relevant under the framework or else you should reject it since it says inequality isn't bad, which violates the fundamental requirements of an ethical theory. In these conflicts, you should default to oppression based impact since A point. Sure, you've been marginalized for a long time, so correcting that student shares possibility for future change, prioritizing other violations allows that in marginalization to continue indefinitely. B point is that inequality is especially bad, regardless of the degree of the harm caused, because people are, the fact that people are equal means that one group should be hard for the sake of the collective. I advocate for a defense of the resolution as a general <coughs> principle. It's a negative one for you to further spec and CX, so we want to do that, provided that the affirmative still has solvency. Contention one is speech restriction. Trump and the elites decide what ideas are valuable in the status quo. Allowing speech of the left is necessary to level the playing field. That's Karanya and Jero in 20. 17. Authoritarian smart to pull the US. Trump surround himself by war mocks and threat of escalation in Syria and beyond. The US is to be the right wing students to be from Marx's center. Demolition of traditional institutions is an insistence on expanding the military. Race on the first steps, terrorist of weapon of gun Talk a trust call collapses in the face of dissent. The new historical repression has been permanent in US schools as to become militarized willingness to all the war for peace funds for critiquing militarism over democracy. Threats to normalize a new level of political corruption and higher education should be understood as democratic spheres where education allows students to develop justice, even, uh, even agency, and utilize critical thinking skills. The ideal is that all the be strong to democracy university. Multiple systemic attack the university as the legend center of radical thought. Conservatives began focus on how to change the main mission of the university to bring it in line with the free market advocates. Use the part to take higher education from students and away from democracy. Second is that we have, this constrains criticisms of acting institutionally like the capitalism. We have to create a framework to allow alternative views to be heard. That's Sulos and Washington 16. We must not limit ourselves to critiquing our questions. Suggest principles where our fund liberating talents could open up new sensibility. College campuses have a key for justice. Liberating talents offers the material ideological space for precisely these laws gets every wish of counter revolutionary forces. And speech is effective because it breaks down echo chambers, laws for coalitional politics that are concrete and effective. That's Karanya and Jero in 2017. U.S. politics and higher education can be limited, linked to domination and intrinsic of the intrusion of the security state and mockery of the very meaning of the university as democratic. Single issue movements operate in silos. The left needs to unite and to create a movement from below represent a different solution that threatens nuclear war, environmental destruction, and terrorism. So just that politics has to be waged on the international level to create resistance movements that can learn from and support each uh, support each other. This is the crisis of democracy is also a crisis of pedagogy. Less is too often underestimated the pedagogical dimensions. The most important forms are intellectual and on the side of brief uh, of belief and persuasion. Any project must include the need incorporate the needs of edu intellectuals and educated hope. The hope can never be reduced merely to abstraction. It has to be concrete and actionable. We need this militant hope. And this outweighs. A point is that it outweighs on permanence. Free speech has caused legal and cultural shifts. That's Zwick in 2017. Free speech weighs more than other rights. Free speech rights facilitate equality claims. This must face that there is a degree of tension focus on equality movements shift from First Amendment rights to substantive equality concerning extreme race equality. First Amendment was a crucial tool for advancing the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act discourse. Proving constitutional rights is perpetual. <coughs> similar pattern is present with the LGBT movement. The freedom of speech association largely serve ground for other productions. B point is empirics. That's Davidson in 16. All actually agree the negative speech creates awareness that good speech can back the bad. And we've seen students say this is the welcome research serves men for more conversation. Evil counsels remedied by the good. Then how long will that atmosphere remain? Research shows the suggestion remain true that when bad speech it's basically used good speech in order to combat the issue. Contention to is protest. 
Free speech is the impetus for social movements and protests. That's Swick in 17. Free uh, speech rights are flown pure in debate, precondition, precedence, right in order to engage effectively. Claimants have to have access to public spaces that protection against governmental censorship. Free speech rights create, creates breathing space for political mobilization on behalf of equality without excessive uh, expressive uh, uh, equality. Substance equality is not attainable. Free speech functions as a powerful catalyst for changing public opinion and perceptions. And a televised image of the podcast had much to do more to do with increasing social awareness and changing perceptions. Each government, uh, each movement has to be on prior successes, and free speech become established and entrenched. However, new movement the general line precedence of the and protection of the First Amendment. Next is reclamation through protest we reclaim education away from corporate control that still got him in Ross 16. Uh, the occupation camps allows for interaction with people in days, open up space and diverse space suspension. It allows the social time to articulate protest and visit the conflict law students to reclaim the status of space to came back three times necessary to study an issue that is no longer branded by the corporate university occupations. Just for economic logic, so calculation and accountability, deeply entrenched today's corporate has living by the capital and students disrupt their reclaiming what it means to study. And counter speech is effective and best prepares for real world activism. That's Kayero 95. Students should never be burdened with an to find funds to help them develop a sense of constructive activism. Students who received assistance to organize meetings to wrote letters to put before the Senate and joined in issuing, uh, issuing statements to glare the public spotlight and remain sharply focused on the racist incident while the distractions without the distractions and cries of state censorship. Okay, um, right now we're going to Yeah. Right. Ready? Yeah. Cool. So do you find implementation? Yes. Yeah, minimizing oppression. That's right, a standard so text. In the in the app like world, would it be good for like there to be like no racism, no sexism, like just completely all the Um people? so perhaps like in an ideal world, I suppose like 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 having no racism would be like good. The affirmative obviously does not claim to eradicate the planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. But, but like that's like the goal of the app would be like to strive towards like the least amount of racism possible, right? Uh, or yeah, like the standard text says that we should minimize oppression, racism, okay, sure. and discounts. So how do we like quantify like how to minimize? Sure. Racism? So that would be that would be like traditional weighing arguments like uh, probability, magnitude, time frame, okay, cool. etc. So let's talk so about. So if your impact is like yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let's talk about. You have this one argument in your second Juro card about um, abstraction. Why it's effective? No, it's this argument about abstraction. Sure. What is that? Uh, sure. Uh, so the argument. So this Juro piece of evidence makes three arguments. Um, the third one, which is the abstraction one, is related to the second one, so I'll explain the second one. So the second one talks about how uh, how the war against like oppression in the context of free speech also has to be waged by intellectuals, which are which are allowed to speak because of like you know free speech constraints. Academic freedom means that they can speak out against like racist systems. Uh, in the status quo, that is not the case, as highlighted by the first piece of juror evidence. So the number three, uh, so the number three point, which talks about abstraction, uh, indicates that uh, obviously there needs to be like tangible, like you know. Uh, changes to the system of academic freedom so that we intellectuals are able to wage against that war. Okay. Wage that war of like criticism, etc. Wait, Both so the like, what's the like, right line between what's abstract <coughs> and like, what's abstract and what isn't? Like, what's the right line? Uh, sure. So, this piece of evidence is not saying that like if you're abstract, you're like automatically bad, but rather this evidence is just saying that reducing constraints on academic freedom is good because it is concrete. It does not say the negative, which is that if you're abstract, oh, okay. you're something that's So basically that it says that- This says good. that this is good because, particularly okay, because cool. it's concrete, accessible, Let's talk about this People know what it means, Yeah, that's fine. Let's talk about the particularism argument at the top of the AC. Okay. What is the implication of this? Sure, uh, so this argument indicates that you need to explain how, uh, I guess the, the typical example is say you have a capitalism critique mm -hmm. and you have an impact of capitalism mm -hmm. and your argument is that capitalism is the root cause of everything you read that Zizek card and daily evidence right so you cannot just assert that capitalism is the root cause of everything and call it a day you need to you need to talk about how the specific manifestations of capitalism that the affirmative produces uh, results in the, like the same harms okay, things cool. like that so you cannot just like so you cannot yeah, like win a debate just by asserting a root cause world. so sure. what would constitute a real world advocate Sure, so a real world advocacy uh, for the negative could include a competitive um, policy that. option or an alternative, or it could be the status quo. The keyword is competitive for the, for Okay, uh, so it just are, has to be competitive, right? Yeah, that if it deviates from the status quo, it has to be competitive. With the okay, cool. So you have to win competition, okay. either yeah, like fine. mutual exclusivity yeah. or something like that. Okay, cool.
specific part of the app? Um, it's going to start with the framework. Okay, sure. Because I know what this is about Alright, framework and extension. Okay. Our violence, 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 violence
Gross uh, argued that narrative would use the woman as a metaphor on the side of a function we could hear from the use of a facility of masking and self-representation charging narrative was attempted to neutralize sexual difference by creating a more generic humanity for a narrative deconstructing the respect of women by the publicity and ambiguity of women who refers to the local community associated with the feminine act women who talk to them that women don't exist by women don't have a fixed essence of assuming the existence of women for representation is a certain sense of narrative the possibility of meaningful unified subject a, to deconstruct the subject's masking and deconstruct the concept of the subspread off to which the subject refers and open up the subject to a people from that and not previously authorized class and authorized their role to just look for the debate of the best material process of thought and discourse not the debate of the best applicants for a post real policy liberation can only be found in singular actions but in practices generally we can understand where no reasons will go and wrap them. It is not possible to say that one thing is liberation and other things are liberation. There are things that one cannot say with a certain can say with a certain degree of constitution yet that is not liberation but a second version of exclusion. And always police possibilities of resistance and oppositional movement. There's nothing absolutely liberating liberty. It's never a sure institution of laws and gender guarantee, which is why the laws and institutions are capable of being turned around the foundation of power in a closed society are not fundamental but they're only reciprocal relations of professional government being intentions to belittle each other. It's extremely dangerous to say that reasons that humans should be limited, but it's dangerous to see any critical question of rationality versus sending us into rationality is a base of rationality versus social dramas and that racism was really cut and formulated. This also means absent any offense, any offense that the AC can never learn to roll out this consistent with the AC's unconscious acceptance of dialectic reason. Uh, so the border just time will pass to the Jew. Uh, actually, skip that uh, on the AC. A focus on the political action fails to recognize bodies that exist in a visible from the public source of the disabled bodies head above. What was our protest? Our protest is sick people for who may not be able to pre- present because of disability account of the other invisible bodies that have missed up out of sight. The political is any action that's performed while the beaten public is what's required to be political to force the population of making a, a political piece. They're not going to get their bodies in the street. The reliance on public to you, uh, whatever takes place in private, is not political. So you can be banned from Tim Miswilly. This is a turn under his second dimension about uh, protest, and this doesn't contradict the uh, KK because uh, even if part of me, even if you win, there are sound effects. Identities. This is still an independent trend then on your framework. First, the method for the app is bad because you inevitably try to exclude people, and that means that the uh, there is an it's a turn the other parts of the independent turn on the AC and also on your consequences argument. First, the method of the case of prior question of policy, since it's, uh, it's important to consider how the subject is constituted before you make policies, and always always because uh, uh, the, the next one always has, well, is better because there's no possible way to create change in the AC world because there's always stack interpretations, whereas the next one opens up the possibility for change too, and consequences fail, and, or uh, even if you win that consequences are good, your process will fail anyways, because if you don't use a theory that accounts for the failure in the first place, then you, well, then the, the, the process will fail. So even if you got valid consequences, he can never actually gain consequences in the long term. Um, then on the first dimension, Unlimited speech causes shutdowns, which drowns out the voice of other opinion. Turns into uh, opinion expressions of minor fifteen. There's been sharp rise in shutdowns. Producers over time perform a shot accusation to which service and represent sophisticated response to security measures. Proves that speakers after one heckler's removal before he or she is interrupted again. Shutdowns are achieved maximum interference by inside the speaker and preventing the others from grasping the messages. Continue use is a dangerous step to the marketplace of ideas in uh, American campuses. Uh, you can cut Gail to the end, but then uh, I read everything else except for the DA. So you didn't read the Gail part. Is that yeah. What you're saying? yeah, yeah, I didn't read. Okay, the and then you didn't read the go cards, you don't really get that, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's just one. Distinguishes oppression from violence, then? Um, so, I would say that the way you like pr- frame oppression in the app framework. No, I'm not talking about my framework, I'm talking about yours. What's the distinction between oppression and violence? Sure, so I would say that violence encompasses like the fluid definition of what oppression is. Oppression is like when you define. Like, is, like, okay, is like racism like still bad? <coughs> you know, no, like, racism is still violent under the. Okay, cool. So, it's, so the affirmative impacts are still relevant under your framework. No, because it says the way that you go about trying to get rid of it just recreates its own impacts. Okay, and the reason why the affirmative does that is that it strives towards an ideal where nobody is like racist or something. Is that your argument? Um, that's like one no of the line? arguments. Okay, cool. All, I would say all the link cards later. Okay, sure. Uh, <coughs> uh, let's go to the alternative. Um, so, does the alternative just fiat that people think of identity as fluid as opposed to um, static? No. Is that what the alternative? Okay, what is the alternative? So the alternative says that we should embrace deconstruction as a method. Yeah, deconstruction of identity, right? As static. It's deconstruction of deconstruction like, all of relationships between identities. What like and what is what does that look like? Like what is that? Okay, look sure. Like? So I would say that Papadello is like gives a good example of okay. Jared as like a metaphor. <coughs> so instead of like thinking of women as like oh like <coughs> 
certain sexual organs, and that defines her as woman, right? Woman has to be fluid because it has uh, it implies multiplicity and ambiguity. So woman is defined in different ways. Okay, different so terms. the alternative just fiats that people think of women that way, for example? It would fiat that people, the alternative says that people would deconstruct identity. And yeah, identity. so the alternative is a fiated action where individuals just suddenly change what they think about identity. It, it's, a, it's also an odd statement, right? That people ought to think that way. Odd's like a, like a normative statement, right? Like, so it's so it like, yeah. Right. What do you mean? Like the argument isn't that like like how can you have like a normative statement without like defending like its implementation? Like the app says that the it app says is a that good it's idea. A good like you to, ought to do the resolution. You no, know, the alternative is like a good thing to engage in, right? Like, yeah. It's like okay. a good ideal. Okay. So it's okay. Cool. Uh, that's fine. Uh, let's go. So why? So the headbutt evidence. Uh, doesn't the headbutt evidence also engage in <coughs> identity politics that you critique? It's a, so the, I said that it was an even if argument, right? Even if you win, the identity can be stable, then the headbutt article applies. Like if you win, the identity should be stable, then the headbutt applies. It's not like a separate claim. Wait, but hold on. So your role of the ballot text is to better interrogate the process of like thought and discourse, right? So. So this is a contradiction with your critique, right? No. Like, I, like I, this I, headbutt card would not have an impact. In the, the world of the alternative, this headbutt in a card would not have an impact, right? In the world of the role, this this card only matters if you win that like identity. Yeah, so in the world of the alternative, the headbutt evidence does not have an impact, right? <coughs> Are you yes. In the world of the alternative and the K, I would say the headbutt does not. Okay. What's the status of the alternative? Unconditional. Stop prep, uh, 210. Order is case critique. Um, I'm not reading cards. Okay. Where are you starting? <clears throat> uh, starting on the affirmative front.
Is everybody ready? The Premier Bank, send one to see Pembroke Evans in the case that stopping impression is necessary. It's necessary good for education, also because that it's not a violation of the one to see Kuti Parking Bay because, uh, because it is not a, uh, the, uh, the no one the evidence doesn't presume any type of ideal. The affirmative is just saying that we need to reduce oppression and cross contamination. I did not say that we need to we need to achieve some ideal where nobody is racist, but rather we should try to minimize it as much as possible, which means that the only assumption that we can win is that consequences are legitimate. However, the it is very clear the consequences are legitimate. You can see the one to see Pakistan evidence, which indicates that naturalism is true and inevitable. The only way that we can evaluate things are through the in observation of the empirical world around us, which is the only thing we can evaluate are things that are consequential. Second, your second, your, your only objection to this is that consequences fail because we cannot predict the future. However, obviously, if we win the case debate, then that means the judge <coughs> and the judge was affirmed that is, that, that proves confidence that people are able to use, uh, uh, that proves confidence that people do believe that predictions are possible. Second is that this evidence is empirical evidence, which means that even if uh, which means that even if consequences are not true, that still proves that voting affirmative is a good idea based off of prior knowledge that we already we already know. So we don't even need consequences good in order to win the in order to win uh, in order to win the one case. So that means the question of debate is whoever whoever best minimizes uh, uh, whoever best minimizes oppression. Furthermore, is another dissent to not using uh, uh, not using Consequences the evidence in a case, in a case that focusing on intention is not consequences solely, focusing on privilege, which is a dissent to the affirmative uh, to, uh, to the alternative role of the ballot and their alternative. And their alternative. Now, the case debate versus the uniqueness debate, the president is higher now because they are already, already engaged by the Trump energy pro victory, specifically on college campuses, which means to try or drive for the affirmative. People who are not engaged in harmful speech in the status quo would, uh, sorry, people who have not been convinced by the Trump administration to do harmful speech would not be encouraged to do harmful speech in the world of the affirmative, which means that which means that all the terms that you've done on the one here are terminally not unique because the oppression has already existed in the status quo. The affirmative is not to a substantial increase on it. Second is the impact. The, offer, the impact is already right. We're oppressive talks. We're oppressive thousand minorities on campus creates one-dimensional campus culture that normalizes racist ideas. Specifically, the affirmative is able to resolve it by allowing, by, uh, uh, by allowing for coalitions. That is the second piece That is the second piece of Karanian dread, is which indicates that current, that current movements are single-issue and very siloed out and divided because there's no free speech. People are unable are unable to discuss their ideas with one another. So fundamentally, they're unable they're unable to reconvene, which is linked turns your critique argument because, uh, because, it is, because it's saying that people should have coalitions in the world of free speech. It's just a question of the mechanism. It's just a question of the mechanism. Second is that, uh, and the affirmative outweighs for you. can see the two weighing cards for the money. See, first is that we can see the magnitude and permanence argument, which indicates the affirmative leads to, leads to substantially greater amounts of legal change, which means that, which means that, which means it causes a reversal of the oppression and violence that we're trying to, we're trying to resolve, which outweighs, uh, which outweighs the, uh, the alternative. Because, because you say, because you only fiat the alternative, you don't fiat permanence of the alternative, which whereas the money see indicates that would lead to legal changes that are permanent and change the culture of the money. See, second is that you can see, uh, uh, second is that you conceded that the money see, uh, uh, you've also conceded that the money see empirically works. Empiricism, that the money see empirically works. Works best. You do not have that for the alternative. Empiricism is a good way to evaluate whether or not things whether or not things are effective because they're based on the they're based on the current flawed world reality. If the alternative link arguments are correct, then we need to have a, a theory that, that that concludes the inevitability of violence. We should probably have an audio theory that, that includes the inevitability that some people may not want to endorse the endorse the alternative. Now the critique debate now the critique debate flow. There are two the, uh, there are two links to the affirmative. The first link is the hack with evidence, which indicates that we that we do not agree that with uh, with some kind of inevitable violence. The second link is identity politics. So we'll address the first link here. The first the first link is very clear. The affirmative does not say that we need to that we need to resolve all that, that resolving all of racism is possible. But rather, in cross-contamination, I was very careful in my choice of words, which is that we need to reduce it as much as possible. Second is that uh, uh, second is that this, uh, second is that your hackling evidence has a pernicious conclusion. Your argument, your argument, for, your argument that people like suddenly assert that some type of oppression is good or is good around is fundamentally is fundamentally nonsensical. People should not be able to assert things like oppression is good or racism is good or people or people should should have to die for the sake of the collective, which is also a dissent to the alternative. Your second link argument: the affirmative is not engaged in any form of identity. Politics. This is only true. This is only, this is only true when the negative brings up in the in, in, in a piece of head, in a piece of head evidence, which means, which, which means that it's offense against critique because the affirmative has so, because the affirmative has traded off with the discussion of the alternative by inserting a discussion about identity politics. The affirmative seconds that the affirmative does not engage in identity politics at all. We do not say we do not say a specific group. Rather, we're just talking about oppressed people, oppressed people as a, as, a, as a general body, which which include people of class, gender, sexuality, etc. Now the alternative permutation do you have a free speech in order to have in order to spread the ideas about unstable about uns, uh, of, of non stack identity. The alternative also is unable to, or yeah, I guess that's fine.
So it's like explanation of the critique, etc. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Is everyone good?
He only makes one term from says that free speech is, if we can spread the idea of deconstruction, but that's a BS part because free speech, he justifies free speech by saying that we need it in order to combat things like oppression, which is, uh, so that means the link is a dissent to the, uh, to the problem. Second is the uh, is that um, the free speech is ine inevitably tied up in this justification, so by trying to minimize, by, uh, minimize uh, trying to reach an ideal, and that's going to still be worse because alternative says that we have to embrace this before we pass policy, so you can't do the act as long as you embrace the alternative. The alternative says that the act policy is always going to be bad since it uh, normalizes what is identity. Um, really quickly, extended rule about because the rule about is to what really better debater than Turks the process of, uh, of thought and discourse. And I already explained why this outweighs the AC flavor, but it's basically a question of whether or not we should pass post fiat policies. And he advocates for a post fiat understanding of how to minimize oppression, but Foucault and Rapino reshaped that since the liberation can't be bound through singular action. So he conceded the argument as to why this outweighs and is a prerequisite to actually being able to pass policies. We need to reorient our understanding towards subjects in order to actually pass policies that work on the AC. First, extend the arguments about consequences, uh, not being able to find good and bad consequences. That takes out the naturalism arguments and the arguments as to why uh, it empirically works. Is, uh, you can't define what is good and bad consequences. Your Davidson card may, just, just isn't even empirical. Just it makes the claim that good speech can combat bad speech, but that's not actually empirically saying that when you pass this, uh, pass this policy, every single person who is oppressed is helped, or like uh, a bunch of people in different groups are helped. Then also uh, extend the argument, which is that your policy will fail anyways, even if in the short term your policy works. It's uh, if you as long as you use the framing. Of st st stable identities, it will always fail in the long term. Means that you, this is outweighing argument because there's no way for you to actually be able to solve uh, in the future. Was the NC always has, the neg world always has a possibility of solving because there's an unstable subject that can always change and unstable rules that can always change to account for the unknowable future and account for individuals. So even if the app is good in the short term, it's definitely going to be really bad in the long term. Then. Um, go on to the argument where he says that intentions focus on privilege, but the argument in the uh, case isn't that we focus on intentions, rather the argument is that we shouldn't focus on consequences. For example, we should focus on like, we should focus on the premise of the uh, policies. That doesn't necessitate that we focus on intentions. It doesn't say that just because we intend to good, we, the intentions are premised on the fact that we intend good ends, but the, uh, the, the case doesn't do that. The, uh, then also on the, uh, not on the uh, actually on the contention. Extend the conceded case term, which is the uh, the Weiner argument, which says that you never actually heard in the AC world because people are always uh, always going to be shouted down. That's going to be really key because even if he's winning everything else on the K debate, he cold concedes this case term, and that means that uh, so long as you, you uh, so long as uh, that means that you at least err neg on the on this argument since it means that the app world always has uh, failures and uh, successes, which means that you have to embrace the <coughs> alternative. The unlimited speech causes uh, Weiner says that unlimited speech causes shout down, which drowns out the voices of other opinions, which turns his arguments about how liberals need to express themselves in order to fight Trump. That's going to be and also an empirical claim. So that's uh, so even if you win this framework, that's good. So the round breaks out really simply. First place you can vote very clearly. If he's winning his framing, vote on Weiner. This outweighs because it uh, negates all of his offense. The, and that means you air net. The second place you can vote is on the K. This is very clearly conceded because he doesn't respond to the warrants in the links, and also he doesn't properly respond to the consequences argument. And all the arguments that he extended on the AC are premised on the fact that consequences matter, but it's bad to try to delineate whether uh, there are good and bad consequences. You have 2.40? Yep. <coughs>
Okay, um, order is going to be an overview of the case that is for cheating. Is the overview on the app? Uh, it's just going to be a weighing argument. Okay. Is everybody ready? One sec. This debate is, will be decided on the specificity of the affirmative answers to the critique versus their link arguments. Fundamentally, specificity is important because that way you can conclude whether or not the affirmative actually causes it, as opposed to broad sweeping claims like, quote, all policies fail, or, quote, all, all identity politics is bad. If we win that the, in the instances of the affirmative, these things are justified, then that means you should vote affirmative. On the case debate, the effectiveness on the plan should be, you should prefer a specific, empirical explanation for why the plan solves, as opposed to broad claims like policies always fail, or you can never determine what consequences are good and bad. They never cited a specific area of the affirmative that would fail because of the link. You should prefer the Davidson evidence, which is empirically verified explanations of whether or not the affirmative solves because it's based on the real world. The Davidson evidence is empirical. It is a citation of tons of experts that are search, that are doing research in the area of free speech and have concluded that counter speech is legitimate and is effective. The second reason for why the affirmative solves is that it empirically relates to legal to legal change, which outweighs on permanence. That's the Zwick evidence, which indicates that free speech creates the impetus for government for advocacy groups to advocate for themselves and therefore advocate for the government, which leads to which leads to concrete and permanent policies, which answers back your, your the affirmative policy only solves in the short term. What does that even mean? They only the negative only says policies only solve in the short term. But you're giving reasons for why specifically the policy of free speech solves in the long term because it leads to concrete emotion, emotional and social changes. Fundamental, uh, fundamental, uh, fundamentally, you go for this link turn, but the link turn was not conceded. The interaction was done in the uniqueness overview. The harmful speech, e.g., the shout outs that the negative talks about, is only legitimated by the Trump presidency, not the affirmative. Trump is pretty shout. Down a militant way to engage in Syria and the world's the way the way that he shouts uh, shouts down reporters, etc. Which means which means that their link argument is t discussing the status quo, not the world of the affirmative. That interaction was done there. Sorry you missed it. Now onto the case. Uh, now onto the creed debate. Specificity is even more important here. There are two links. The first link is just talking about is just talking about how the affirmative results in violence and is inevitable. However, the uh, the affirmative does recognize that violence and oppression are inevitable. There's no you you cannot cite a single piece of the one you see that actually said that we that we strive for some utopia where nobody is suddenly racist, that you didn't, you couldn't even get that out of cross-examination. The second link is identity politics. However, the affirmative does not engage in any form of identity politics. Identity politics, at least the way that most people understand it, is based off of divisions, based off of particular groups. For example, man, woman, class, race, gender, sexuality, etc. However, the affirmative is only resolving violence against, uh, is only resolving violence against oppressed groups generally, not dividing them into specific identity categories. And there's a link term to this argument. The Karanya and Jero evidence indicates that the free speech policy specifically Causes di causes different groups to join together because we're under the banner of free speech, and this is empirically proven. Which which means that the permutation is necessary because free speech means that the siloed out different alternative groups finally are able to join together under the banner of the affirmative and the alternative. Permutation also shields the link, which be because obviously if you do the app and you do the alternative, that solves all of your link arguments, so you do not get a turns case argument. But furthermore, free speech is necessary in order to spread the ideas of the alternative and non static identity. Most people don't know it's a thing. Proven by the uniqueness overview, Trump is trying to put people into narrow categories. The affirmative allowing free speech <coughs> opens up the world of the critique to, to actually solve.